find that you're better able to make decisions and stick to the things you want to do and you feel better about yourself because you've learned how to take control of your life rather than being distracted by everyone else vying for its attention because everyone is right these candy packages and everything else is designed to look good designed to make you want it billboards everywhere ads right everyone's vying for your time and attention and trying to get you to do what they want you to do but you need to be able to make your own decisions to be happy right Gavin, why is it difficult for most people to stay motivated? I think it's difficult because you have you kind of have it backwards when you look at the whole motivation part. Motivation is volatile. It comes in waves and oftentimes it is perishable. And acting on motivation is going to get you to where you want to go in the short term, but it's not going to work in the long term. And so what we have to do is we have to ask ourselves, what is going to work in the long term? How am I going to be able to implement a workout plan that is going to last me five years, right? And so now we start shifting our focus on discipline. What's going to work in the long term? What's going to work when adversity hits? And this is where discipline comes in. And that's essentially what the the book is that we're reading. It's the daily self-discipline book. And a lot of it talks about living life with intent, which is essentially what discipline is at the end of the day. It's living a life that you want to live. You know, like you have a lot of things that you want to do, but you may not necessarily live by that every single day. And that's where discipline comes in. I don't think motivation is ever going to get you to that long-term goal, although it may be crucial in the beginning stages of you starting out. Yeah, I generally think self-discipline has like two parts. One of it is this, um, is designing an environment and habits where when it's easy, or when you're motivated, when it's not challenging, when you have all the time you need to get it done, that you still manage to do what you want to do, whatever that is, whether that's working out, whether that's writing every day. But then the other half of self-discipline is what happens when it's not easy, right? Well, when it's not easy, then that's when you actually like need something else to stay on track and not uh, miss your goals and deadlines. And so that's really the two parts. One is designing the environment that makes it easy as often as possible. The other one is surviving the times when it's not easy. And so if you can master those two halves of the system, then it becomes really, really easy to sort of make the decisions you want to make and do the things you want to do in the long term. And just like in Atomic Habits, which a lot of parallels with Atomic Habits in this book, just like in Atomic Habits, you'll get that consistency, that long-term growth, and over time, uh, just becoming a little bit better every day, you get to receive that because you've been disciplined. Yeah, that's 100% true. I think, again, we've talked about Atomic Habits a lot, and I, I want to say we've mentioned it in every single episode, if not, like, um, all of them except one, yeah. maybe, right? Yeah. And a lot of living your life with intent is building a system, right? Because oftentimes what people will do is they'll, you know, they'll, they'll get this, this goal in mind. And in order to get towards this goal, say, becoming extremely fit, right? Benching two plates or something like that in, in the gym. Waking up in the morning and getting yourself to the gym may be a pretty steep barrier for most people. And if your alarm goes off in the morning and you turn it off and you sort of lay there in bed thinking about whether or not you should get up, the chances of you succeeding are going to be a lot lower as a result of that because you're spending a lot more time thinking about what your next play is going to be. When what you really should be doing is automizing this, this, these tasks that are going to help you get towards said goal of benching two plates. Okay. And so at the end of the day, that really comes down to building a system like Atomic Habits talks about. And so 
I think if you're not able to build that system, your your chances of of success are going to be a lot lower. Um, winners and losers have the same goals. So what different differentiates the winners from the losers? The the thing that differentiates the two is the the system that the winners have in place. The system that the winners have in place is going to be a lot more refined than that system that the losers have in place. Maybe the losers don't even have a system in place. And so that's something that you really need to to get down to a science to find what works best for you, I'd say. Definitely. And on that, with talking about systems, there's another quote from Atomic Habits, which is like, you, you don't rise to the level of your goals, you fall to the level of your systems, right? And so you need to have something in place because inevitably that's what happens. Inevitably it gets difficult, you get, you know, bored or lazy. And, and so what you want to do is make sure that you have something in place where you can stay consistent. Because that's the end goal of sort of self-discipline is if you're consistent, then you can do just about anything. And so if you're able to figure out what whatever it takes to motivate you. For me, that's a lot of tracking. I, I track a lot of what I do throughout the day and, and that helps me stay motivated because I can see over time myself getting better and better. And, and that's reward enough for me. But you, you do need some reward. Atomic Habits ex explains exactly why and goes into all the details, but what gets rewarded gets repeated and so when building your system, you be sure to include everything, every portion of the habit stage from cue, craving, response, reward, all four of those things need to be included in building your system. Well, you can do those every day and you can be prepared every day for, okay, what if I, I'm trying to eat healthily and, and I get a craving for candy, how do I, how do I respond to that and make sure that I still make the right decision, even when it gets difficult right and so over time because you're making these better decisions that's when you actually find all the things that you want you you find that you're healthier you find that you have more time to spend with your family you find that you're better able to make decisions and stick to the things you want to do and you feel better about yourself because you've learned how to take control of your life rather than being distracted by everyone else vying for its attention because everyone is right these candy packages and everything else is designed to look good, designed to make you want it. Billboards everywhere, ads, right? Everyone's vying for your time and attention and trying to get you to do what they want you to do, but you need to be able to make your own decisions to be happy, right? Yeah, 100%. And a lot of people crave things like health, family and freedom but they don't necessarily live by that each day right like i definitely crave those three things myself and i wouldn't necessarily say that i'm living by all those each day or i'm not living in pursuit of those three each and every day and so building a better system is going to be something that that helps you uh, get towards that. It's like in the book, the daily self discipline book, he talks about how you sort of you sort of start with those you, you think of the things that you want, which are generally those three that I just named. And you kind of work your way backwards, right, which is pretty much what a system is you you look at the end result. And then you think to yourself, well, how, how can I get there? Right? Like, what can I be doing each and every day to make sure that I'm living my life in pursuit of freedom, that I'm living my life in pursuit of finding those bonds with family members or friends? Like, what can I be doing? Could I be going out and actually making the time to see my mother once a week, right? Clearing out the the Saturday schedule to make sure that you're spending time with them because one day they may not be there, right? So it's building a system, starting from the end and working your way back to 
ensure that these things are getting done. Because if they really are important to you, you'll you'll make sure that they are getting done, that you're living your life in pursuit of these things. And I think that's a lot of what discipline is. It's living your life with intent, with purpose. And so if you're able to to build that system, I think you'll get a lot closer to that. You know, important things need to be done first, right? There's a great demonstration of like a professor putting like rocks in a drawer and then saying, is it full? And then you put smaller pebbles in it and says, is it full? And then he puts sand. And then after that, he puts in water. And then he's like, yeah, so what's the point of this demonstration? And someone says, you can always get more out of the day. And he says, no, if you have big goals, you have to put those in first, right? If you do the most important thing first, then everything else can fall into its place nicely. And so that's what I really think is all about with um, you, you need to prioritize, right? You, you need to have a system where you know what the most important thing is to you and you'll pick that. And I, I remember, I don't remember where the story came from, but um, one person uh, became a healthier person by just asking themselves throughout the day, what would a healthy person do in this situation, right? I'm not a healthy person yet. But what would they do? And let's do that. And, and so just constantly, like, if if you feel like you're, you know, not healthy, you're, you're not, um, I, I don't, if you feel like you're not a good writer, that, that was me for a very, very long time. And I'm still not sure that how I feel about that. But if you're feeling like this is something that, oh, you just can't do it for whatever reason. No, you absolutely can. No doubt about it. So do it. And just make the decisions that a healthy person would make. Make the decisions that a writer would make, right? And and if you think about it that way, I think that's helpful. Because a lot of people can get, like, tripped up on, oh, I, I, am I genetically inclined to do that? Am I genetically able to lift two plates or whatever? And, and yes, you can. So many people get distracted by genetics and it's not really helpful on an individual scale. It, it might be helpful, you know, on a larger scale, but I really think the biggest advantage of genetics is that as a kid, you're slightly better than everyone else. At, uh, not everyone else, but you're slightly better at this one thing. And so you get this thought of, oh, then other people see that and they, they reward you with like praise and telling you you're good at it. And so you get get this sort of loop in your head as a kid. Oh, if I do that, I feel good because they all tell me that I'm good at it and I feel the success or whatever. And that's the biggest advantage of genetics. You just get that loop early on where you're convinced, oh, I should keep on doing this. I should do this more and you're consistent. That's all that really happens with genetics. And then it becomes self-fulfilling that, oh, they're just genetically superior at this or whatever, but no. It's because they spent a whole ton of time having fun with it and they kept on working and spent more time on it than anyone else. And now they're better at it than anyone else, which is no surprise because that's what you would expect to happen, right? And so if you ha if someone who wasn't genetically inclined for something had some sort of positive feedback loop there where they, they learned to be consistent in that thing, I think they still would achieve massive, massive success in it just because it's not really about genetics, it's about consistency and being able to make the decisions that lead you where you want to go. Yeah, uh, consistency is a big one. And it's oftentimes the, the hardest part, really, like doing something for an extended period of time in order to become fit or something like that. I remember there was this interview with Simon Sinek and he was talking about consistency and he posed the question. It was like, why she fall in, why she fell in love with you. Okay. She didn't fall in love with you because you spent a ton of time with her one particular day. You know, she fell in love with you because you did the little things you cooked food or something like that. When she was hungry, you gave her a glass of water 
without ice because you know she likes that when she didn't even ask for it. You know, like you did the little things. You held the door open for her um, every single day. You guys went out or something like that. It's the little things that add up. It's you. She fell in love with you because you were consistent. You can't you, you know, you uh, you came to the plate and you delivered for an extended period of time. Like, that's why she fell in love with you. Right. And then in the same interview, he also talked about becoming a fit individual. You know, like you don't become fit by going to the gym one day for 10 hours straight while that is actually stupid. Don't do that. You you became a fit individual because you went to the gym 30 minutes every single day for an entire year. You became a fit individual because you went out and you ran five miles every single day for multiple years on end. Okay. And that's really what it is. That's what it boils down to being consistent and well how do you become a consistent at x y and z well you become consistent at x y and z by becoming a disciplined individual which is somebody that does not fault under the pressures of adversity right which is at, at times very difficult and i think we've talked about this in prior episodes uh what do you do when adversity hits? It's like, okay, well, you fall back on your why. Well, <laughs> what is your why? Well, that's a that's a difficult question. And it's going to be very dependent upon you as a person. Like, why do you want to work out? Is it because you want other people to view you in a certain way? Well, that's entirely up to you. Not me, not BJ, not your mom. That's That's a question that you need to ask yourself. And hopefully it's a good answer. Because if it's not a great answer, then you may struggle with being consistent. Okay. It's funny. When I think back to the times I've been the most productive, I have so much trouble remembering because everything was so automatic. Everything was so consistent. It was on autopilot. I didn't have to think about doing it. I just did it, whatever it was. Whether it was studying three hours a day, running 50 miles a week, it just happened automatically. And, and so I really have trouble thinking back to that. But I still remember the results. I still remember how I felt after when I actually accomplished the things I wanted to accomplish. That, that's not going away. That's locked in my brain forever. And so you need to figure out what you need to do to make smart decisions on autopilot where, where they just happen because that's who you are that's what you're doing no questions about it and, and no one can dissuade you from that and part of that might be initially putting yourself through some discomfort some difficult situations where you you get the opportunity to prove to yourself oh i i can actually survive hard things um one great example, the one that I, I've done before and I think is super helpful is just taking freezing cold showers, right? I, I think that really demonstrates an excellent principle. Um, and I, I think Martin Meadows was the one who introduced me to this. A and it's the, that it's just the first two minutes that actually m matter if you're in the shower in freezing cold water. After two minutes, if you can survive two minutes, you can survive 20, you can survive two hours. It, it, it's the, those two minutes is when your body's going like panicking because it's cold and it's like, oh, get me out of here or just turn it up a little, get out of the shower because it's just so, so painful. Those first, they're not painful, really. Well, it can be I, probably your first time, but it, it's just your butt body overreacting and getting scared for those two minutes and then it adjusts because it's perfectly fine to be within cold water occasionally uh, and i think same thing can go for a lot of cravings where if you can just survive you know two minutes without satiating your craving 15 minutes without satiating your craving th then then you can survive for hours you can survive for days just b because it, it, it's only the first portion that really is difficult like it's 80 20 principle right 80 percent of the pain is in the first 20 percent of 
um, what happens. And then the remaining 80% is actually 20% of the pain. And so knowing that and, and then applying that to everything else, it's hardest to get started with the workout. It's actually easier. Well, once you start a workout, it's easier to end it, right? And you overthink so much about it, which is why uh, another thing from Atomic Habits is just setting out your workout clothes every day, right? Very simple, costs nothing to do, but reducing those 30 seconds that it takes to get them out of your closet or out of your dresser, that makes a big enough difference where that can be the difference between you going to the gym or not, which that could be the difference of whether or not you maintain your habit over the course of the year or not. And so that makes a big, big difference in terms of just setting out your workout clothes on your bed or something. Makes a big difference in terms of over time when it scales, right? Yeah, I think I think fitness is one of the best ways that a person can become a more disciplined individual. I think from my life, this has truly been the best way I've become a more disciplined individual. I think fitness is great because there's physical and mental aspects of it. If like learning how to code for me is quite annoying at times, but it's, it's really just, it's just a mental thing. There's no like physical discomfort while I'm coding. There's only like mental <laughs> discomfort at times. And with working out, there's both. And that truly is something that's that's difficult to do, especially in the long run, doing it every single day. And so if you're able to work out every single day, I think that kind of person is one that is someone that doesn't shy away from adversity, somebody that is extremely disciplined. And somebody that comes to mind for me would be David Goggins. Like this guy has been able to do some pretty courageous things over the course of his life, like physical and mental things. He was able to go through hell week. Like, I guess you could say like two and a half times he went through three, but he was able to put himself through things that you didn't even think were possible. And he was able to run 120 mile weeks for an extended period of time. And you kind of sit back after hearing that story and, and you sort of think like, what the heck? Like, what, what am I doing over here? Like, you know, you know, I, like, I think the furthest I've ever run is 16 miles, right? The furthest this guy has ever run, what, like a hundred miles, you know, like, and I thought the 16 mile run was hard. Like imagine running a hundred miles <laughs> over the course of 24 hours, right? Like the kind of person that is able to do that is not somebody that fears adversity in the slightest, right? And it's not like you have to go out and run a hundred miles on your first go. Okay. It's these little, the <laughs> PJ, it's you, like, it's, you're talking, uh, working out every day, running a hundred miles. And I'm like, we are beginners here, right? I, I think so many people are so far from that, that they shouldn't even be thinking about that. I, I, I think a lot of people work out once a week. Come on, half an hour. Yeah, yeah. You, you can do it. And, and like, uh, one, one of the ways is that sort of, um, I, I don't know. Or, I, I don't know that I actually use this, but I had this thought of, okay, what's one way to help myself stay motivated and do the things that I want to do? It is whenever I want to do something, but I'm having trouble convincing myself to do it, you, you, you ask, okay, how would the devil make me do this? How would he trick me into doing this? Okay, he, he wouldn't make you do the whole thing. He wouldn't make you work out every day. He would make you just just go to the gym. You don't even have to lift any weights. Just go to the gym. Just be there, right? And then over time, oh, just just pick out that weight, right? That's how he would convince you with with small little 
tricks to make you eventually accomplish those things. And so I, I think if you forget about all the people doing better than you, forget about Goggins, forget about everyone else, and, and just well, forget about the other people at the gym, because honestly, everyone there is the most genuine, helpful people who, almost everyone that I've encountered, they've always been like, just happen like I, I was using the hack squat machine and I didn't realize that it like unlocked so you could go down all the way so I'm just doing it and I'm barely doing any work and I'm like wow this is really easy put on more weight and then he comes over here and shows me yeah so this is uh, I, I don't know what you're trying to do uh, uh, um, but like it, when I work quads this is what I do and he shows me that it unlocks and I'm like oh yeah that would be way more difficult thanks because I just had no clue how to work the equipment and everyone there was just happy to help, right? So no, no one's judging you because you haven't been doing this as long as them. You're, honestly, the number one person in the gym judging you is yourself because you're just, everyone's just so self-conscious, right? You know, and that, that's something I think you have to overcome because that's making it harder to accomplish your goals. And finding like the little ways throughout the day to make yourself make yourself uncomfortable, I think it is a good one as well. And he talks about it in this book, the Daily Self uh, Discipline book. Something that I do to to just add discomfort to my life every day is I have like I have this electric longboard and it's really heavy. It's like twenty pounds, and if I'm like if I have to get off of it and then walk to class or something like that. And the walk from like the front of the building to my classroom is really far away. It gets really heavy. And oftentimes what I'll do is I'll like switch hands. And I think, no, 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 I'm not going to switch hands, right? Like I'm going to do it on one hand. And by the time I get to class, like my shoulder is in so much pain. It's like, it hurts so much, but it's something I do throughout the day to add discomfort to my life. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not going to switch arms. I'm not going to switch arms. I'm going to keep it on my left arm. And I know by the time I get to class, it's going to be extremely painful, but I'm going to do it because I want to add discomfort to my life. Just like small things like that. You know, in the book, he mentions like, if you leave your house or something like that, don't bring your phone with you. Like if you go out to study for five hours, don't bring your phone with you. Why? Because it's going to add a little bit of extra discomfort to your life. It's not something major. I guarantee you it's something you could do right now. Like when you go out to run errands, don't bring your phone. I mean, if you need to for navigation or something like that, then I get it. But it could literally be something like I'm going to leave my phone on silent for the next five hours. OK, and I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to think, oh, man, I wonder if this person texts me. No, 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 no. I'm going to leave it on silent for the next five hours because I know it's going to make my life a little bit more uncomfortable. The next time I'm studying, I'm going to take my phone and throw it on the bed. So that way I have to get up and, you know, take a few steps. It's a little bit harder to get towards it. So that adds a little bit more discomfort to my life. Think about all these, these things that you can be doing. And trust me, you can get really darn creative with it, right? Like, what can I do right here, right now to make my life a little bit more uncomfortable? Because we tend to err on the side of comfort, right? Like when there is a decision to make, I'm probably going to choose the more comfortable one. Like when I go take a shower, man, I want to take a warm one, right? Like I, man, I hate cold showers. <laughs> I, BJ, I guess takes them every single day. No, not, and I, I did for, not anymore. I did for several months, but it, like he says in the book, it's not necessary to put yourself through horrible things once you've proven, yeah, you can do, you can do that, you can do horrible stuff, but you can go back to the warm showers too. So I'll occasionally mm -hmm. do cold showers, but not every day, man. Please, no. <laughs> but yeah, there is, there are things that you guys can be doing every day to make your lives more uncomfortable. And this is going to help with discipline, right? You're going to become the kind of person that shrugs off adversity like it's nothing. I know we talked about this in the, the Jordan Peterson book, The 12 Rules for Life. And it was like it was the parenting chapter. 
I'm not a parent, but I, I don't know this, this chapter resonated with me so much because I think it was called so, something along the lines of don't let your children do anything to make you dislike them or yes. something like that. And it talked about the, this, this sort of parent that tries to protect their child from all adversity or chaos that could possibly enter the child's life. And first off, that's an impossible goal. You should never try to do that because you will fall short. And if you do try, let's pretend 10% of the chaos seeps its way into this kid's life. This child is probably going to get knocked down pretty hard, right? Because you've successfully fended off 90% of the possible chaos that could possibly seep uh, its way into this child's life, therefore making your child weaker, okay? And I think that has parallels to what we're talking about right now, right? With finding ways in which you can make yourself this like uncomfortable throughout the day, okay? And if you find a way to add discomfort to your life, I think you're making yourself a stronger person. And if and when adversity hits, you're able to shrug it off like it's nothing, okay? I think everything that we want has some cost attached to it, uh, whether that's money, whether that's self-discipline, whether that's patience. Like, if you want to be patient, the key is don't get what you want immediately. Go without the things, uh, let things be late, right? And, and that will make you a more patient person. It, it, and so if you can pay that cost, right, whatever it is, the that that's how you're going to accomplish that's that's how you're going to get what you want if you want these trades if you want certain things you got to pay the cost for them right there's no there's no tricking the system there's no you you will be self-disciplined or you will not based off what you do to earn it and i i think it, it's not hard to earn it i i, I just think we don't want there's a cost associated with it and we don't want to pay but to gain self-discipline part of it part of what you need to do is go through discomfort and then control your environment and that will if you do those two things i think that's when you'll have self-discipline and so uh just a few things that i might recommend one thing is if you can uh, on the side of controlling your environment, if, if you can designate certain areas of your house or your room or whatever for specific tasks and hold yourself to that, where, okay, this is the portion of the house where I can waste time. If I want to waste any time and just relax, I go to this room. Otherwise, everywhere else, I'm working. I I'm getting stuff done. I'm focused. I'm disciplined. But this, this one place, okay, this is where I sleep. This is where, th this is where I can be lazy and relax and be at peace. But, or like, dedicate a chair. Okay, this is where I'm going to read, right? And I'm going to stay focused on reading here. If I want to stop reading, or if I get a notification on my phone, I have to stand up to look at that notification because this is where I read, and control your environment that way. Well, one thing that I've done is, like, I don't have food available. Like, I, if I want food, I have to, like, go to the store. Because it's just not near me. It's not available. And so I'm much easier able to control my diet, right? Because I don't have stuff available. Um, and so just little things like that. Uh, just making it 30 seconds harder to do the things that you don't want to do makes a massive, massive difference. And... I think that's probably the biggest takeaways from this book and Atomic Habits. One of the biggest is just make the things you want to do easier, make the things you don't want to do harder, just a little bit, and that's all you need. I think a lot of what this boils down to is just developing some sort of plan. And you've heard this cliched phrase, but like a bad plan is better than no plan, okay? If you're blindly walking about with nothing to follow, then 
you have this goal, but you have no means of getting towards this goal. Okay. Developing some sort of plan to aid you in your pursuit of accomplishing these goals is going to be at the end of the day, the best thing you can do. Okay. Building a system. What is that? Well, that's, that's a plan adding discomfort to your life in a bunch of random ways. You can make plans for that, right? You can make a plan to decrease the amount of friction that is going against you when you're going to the gym every morning. You can decrease it, right, by forming a meaningful plan. You can um, make things 30 seconds easier by making some sort of plan by putting you know, your floss sticks in a more accessible area, like what I do, right? Like I had r a trouble flossing every night. I haven't missed a night since, right? And it's been, gosh, it's been almost a year now since I've missed a night, right? And that's because I developed a plan for myself in order to get towards that desired outcome. And so if you want to do something, if you want to become a more disciplined person, make a plan. If you want to be somebody that shrugs off discomfort or adversity, I think you need to make a plan for that as well. So this kind of all boils down to that. Uh, I, I probably wouldn't even call it a plan. I'm like, just stop whatever you're doing. Go work out right now. Like literally, I don't care if you ditch the podcast right now. Go, go do something. Like, all right, see you. Yeah, just go, just go do something that will accomplish your goal bring you close to your dreams stop scrolling on tiktok and just do something it doesn't actually matter what it is because if you start by doing something then you naturally optimize how you spend your time right if you start by doing something and make it then just do it again tomorrow and do it again the next day and then do it again the next day that becomes consistency even without a plan even without anything else it still requires effort still requires you making the decision every day to do that but th that's all it really takes is just doing something and it's easy to easier to do something when you have a plan when you have a system to make that happen but even if you don't even if you don't know where to start with making a system to work out just doing something will make a massive benefit and i think that's a good place that's pretty much it yeah thank you so much for listening um speaking of tiktok we don't have anything against it in fact we post on there so you might check out that stuff but also you know accomplish your goals please do that too um thank you so so much for listening we'll be back tuesday at noon with our next episode i th i think it's on can't hurt me by David Goggins, right? Who we just talked about. Yes, it is. He, Gavin hyped him up for you. He's a really cool dude. Go ahead and read his book so you, you can know what we're talking about next week. And we'll see you then. Thank you so much. Bye, guys.